When you get the man right, you get the world right. When you get the person right, when you get an individual right, that's when you start to create transformational breakthroughs. Peak performance, right? That's what today's all about. How can you, as a leader, become a peak performer? Being a true peak performer is thriving in every phase of life. Matt Mayberry is a former NFL player with the Chicago Bears. He joins us from Chicago tonight. Leadership is not a difference maker, it is the difference maker. A bear can't be nothing but a bear. A dog can't be nothing but a dog. But as human beings, we have the wonderful privilege of being whatever we want to be. Right now is your time. Right now is your time. Take the moment to gain extreme clarity about your practice, about who you want to be as a man or as a woman, who you want to be as a leader. Make the decision to take full, complete responsibility for your life. Expand your vision as to what's possible. You can do more. You can do, have, and become more every day of your life. Focus on how are you responding to the events in your life, both positive and negative. Because when you do that, your life will change forever. You hear that? That's your dream trying to get out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage Mr. Matt Mayberry. The title of my presentation today is Transformational Leadership, The Building Blocks to Becoming a Game-Changing Leader. And my time in the NFL as an athlete is which 1% of the population gets the opportunity to make it that, to that level. It's the best of the best from all over the country. And now in the business world, meeting with some of the most extraordinary leaders, innovative leaders, changing the world, the one resemblance that they all have, the, the, the common theme they all share is that transformational leaders are obsessed with growing themselves because they fully understand that they cannot grow their team, they can't grow their dental practice until they grow themselves. And there's a very clear resemblance as to what the best NFL teams do, as to what the best organizations do, regardless of industry. I've seen it firsthand with my own two eyes. And the one commonality between the two is this. They have created a culture and team environment where they are obsessed with growing the individual. Obsessed. And before I get started with all that great stuff that we're gonna talk about, because we're gonna talk about culture, teamwork, how to build a phenomenal world-class team, how to lead through change, and everything else that you probably wanna know as a leader and how to be more efficient being in leadership, but also dominating the competition. But before I get into any of that, let me get a quick show of hands. How many people have never, ever heard of Matt Mayberry before today? Raise them high. Oh, shh. <laughs> that really hurts. <laughs> that hurts the ego. The keynote speech that Matt Mayberry gave to my leadership team was not only relevant, but incredibly inspirational. He used his personal experiences to resonate with my team, and they were able to get quite a few takeaways from it. They left here very rejuvenated, ready to work on themselves as leaders, and had a lot of great ideas on how to make their teams more effective. We will definitely be asking Matt back. If you want a different result, you can't stay the same person. A different result, a different expectation demands a new you. And that's where a lot of people, they miss that gap. 
They think that they can make $10 million a year. They think they can increase revenue by 35%. They think that they can have a world-class culture if they continue to be the same leader they've always been. It'll never happen. You have to become a different type of man or woman to get to a new level of success. It demands it. The best leaders are always asking themselves, how can we do this better? How can we have more meaningful conversations and touches with our clients, not just when there's a problem or things are going wrong? How can we elevate our team performance? How can I elevate my performance as a leader? If you have that type of curiosity on a daily basis, I guarantee you a lot of people will come to you at the end of the year and say, job well done. The best leaders, the very best, have a staggering level of curiosity. Think of every organization, every team, every department in an organization as a big circle. In the center of that circle, you have the 10 percenters, as I call them. The 10 percenters are reliable, they go above and beyond and do a phenomenal job at their job. They're well-liked, well-respected, and they're the hardest workers in the room. 10% of those people are in the middle. Those are the very best people on your team. The 80 percenters consist of the people that they're positive on most days. They do a good enough job, but they never really go above and beyond. They just show up, do a job that they have to do, collect a paycheck, they, they might do it well, but they're never going above and beyond. They're never helping us innovate or find ways to do our job better. You know, really just getting by to an ex extent. And the bottom part of that is the bottom feeders, the 10% of the bottom feeders. These are the people that come to work that are usually negative. They're talking about other employees. They're always questioning the leader's decision as why, why are we doing this? Why are we going through this? This is what we've always done in business. We've been very successful at doing things this way. Why are we doing this now? And they're always finding ways to nitpick or talk about things in a negative way. So that's the bottom 10%. So what am I sharing with you this for? The easiest and most effective way that I have found to build a great team is that your job as a leader your job as a leader is to wake up every single day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and ask yourself, how can we go get an 80 today? How can we go get an 80 and bring him into the top 10? How? Every day in college, because in college we had five to six captains. And those five to six captains, they never needed to be motivated. They were already motivated. So what leadership did, the only way, how do you build a Big Ten program from the bottom that doesn't win any games, maybe one or two games, how do you get them to compete against Ohio State or Michigan? You wake up every single day with enthusiasm, with a strong belief in the future, and you say to your leaders, the people that you can count on, the top 10 percenters, let's go get an 80 today. Every day, your job as a leader should get a person in your, on your team that's in the 80 percent and move them to the top 10 percent. Because a lot of leaders, they make the mistake of paying too much attention to the bottom 10%. Just let them go. Just let them be. The best organizations, the best organizations fully understand that if you create such a phenomenal and world-class culture, they will leave on their own. They will leave automatically because they do not fit into that culture. Achieving the goal is not the most important thing. The man or woman and the leader that you become in the process, in the pursuit of achieving that goal, that is the most important thing. The man or woman and the type of leader you become in the pursuit of you achieving your most important goal, that is the most important thing. The new habits that you instill and develop in your life, the new mindset, the new perspective that you develop, like, you, you become a different type of person. How can you go deeper in knowing their problems, their challenges? How can you build more meaningful connections at every single touch point? 
When I was meeting with doctors and surgeons when I was starting in my career, I knew their sons, their daughters, when their birthdays were, what their problems were. I knew if a doctor was, went through lung cancer three and a half years ago, I always knew that day he finally became cancer free. Every single day, I tried to find a way to go deeper in my connections. Every day. How can you go deeper in building more meaningful connections? The best sellers in the world, regardless of industry, regardless if we're talking about inside sales or outside sales, regardless of what we're talking about, they prepare to be the best. They know their material, they know the market, they know their product, they know their service better than anybody else. And then after they know that, after they prepare to be a champion, after they prepare to be a champion, they are obsessed about finding the challenges and problems that their client or prospect is going through and then helping to guide them through that experience in finding a solution. True value-based sellers, obviously, and most of the time, know the solution before their client or prospect even does. Because that is how in tune they are about the market, about the product or service, and about the customer. The high school guidance counselor told you that by your 18th birthday, he said you'd either be in prison or dead. How can the guy I'm talking to right now, listening to you talk the way you are so articulately, how could I hear that from your guidance counselor? You know, whether I'm, going, I'm speaking to corporate executives all around the country or even a university's athletic team, I'll always say association is everything. You are who you hang out with. You show me your five closest friends. I'll show you where your future is headed. And for me, when I was 16 years old, uh, kind of put in perspective for you, I was hanging around drug addicts. I was hanging around people that were committing crimes. Every wrong thing that you could possibly think, that's what I was doing. Those are the habits that I instilled because of who I was associating with on a daily basis. That's how I was living my life at 16 years old. So that's why my guidance counselor told me these are the only two things left that are going to happen if you don't get your act together. I just think that a lot of us have setting goals confused with executing and achieving goals. Because there's a very, very big difference. And the business that we're all in, the game of business, consists of one thing, and one thing matters, execution. Results. Of course, delivering exceptional world-class experiences for the guests. Of course, having new marketing schemes and different sales strategies, develop, developing that world-class culture. There's so many aspects of building a great company and organization, becoming a dominant transformational leader. But at the end of the day, at the grand scope of things, the only thing that matters are you getting results? There's no second place trophies in the game of business, regardless of industry. Just like there's no second place trophies in the NFL. Execution is the name of the game. You know, it's funny, but we have all these you know, universities and all these different programs that put on leadership classes and define what leadership is and how you can be a great exceptional transformational leader and, and really what leadership is all about, right? But at the end of the day, if you go and look at some of the most prestigious, courageous, most dominant leaders to ever live. You know, because success leaves clues, ladies and gentlemen. It leaves clues. It's those three qualities that define every great leader. If you do not love people, generally speaking, I mean, especially in the hospitality industry, if you don't love people, you will never be a great leader. Because the best leaders, regardless of industry, they look to find ways they can love more every day. What does that look like? How can you go above and beyond to create an exceptional guest experience for just one person for that day? Just, just that day. What's one way you can go above and beyond? One way. It's a revolutionary idea that can transform your culture, your team, that if you, the leader, wakes up every single morning, and when you go into work, if you can ask yourself, how can I love my team just a little more today? How can I love my guests a little bit more for today? How can I love my family for just a little more today? If you ask yourself that question, you will start to find the answers. And a lot of times, it's just doing the little things better than everybody else. You have to care more about the process than you do about the outcome. Right? 
care more about the process than you do about the outcome. When you learn to love and care for the process, the outcome's gonna take care of itself. But most people, a huge part of the population, they like to only focus on the end result. So many organizations, so many leaders in today's business climate, they hate change, they fear change. Why? Number one, they're so used to doing business the way they've always done business. Two, their mindset. What do I mean by mindset? As a former NFL athlete, mindset's everything. As a leader, leadership is not a difference maker, it is the difference maker. And a lot of times with leading through change and adapting to change, it starts with your perspective. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today is, how can you change your perspective towards change? Because me personally, I freaking love change. Why? Because I know that that is the only way I can innovate as a leader, as a business owner. That is the only way I can help my staff innovate and get better. And most importantly, that is how I know I'm gonna make a tremendous impact on the world by continually looking and thriving into that change and running full steam ahead towards that change. And then three, the fear of the unknown. Tom Brady is not gonna let you say, I've been in the league for 15, 20 years. This is how I've always done it. This is what's worked for me. I've made $50 million. You can't tell me what to do. You'll be thrown out of there because that's the culture they built. And we have to do the same in the business world. That even if we've been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, kudos to you. You've been very successful at it. You've had a great run, but guess what? How many people have rented a movie from Blockbuster recently? <laughs> I promise you this. You might hate change, you might dislike change, but I know something that you will hate even more. Irrelevance. Irrelevance. Your ability to change and want to change has to be greater than the possibility of you being irrelevant because that is what happens to the organizations that do not adapt day in and day out to the moving and never ending constant change in the business world. I had a coach in the NFL, my linebacker coach, who would always say, Matt, 94, adapt or die, adapt or die. And he would always say, adapt or die. In a film room, going to the bathroom, if I saw him next to me going to the bathroom, whatever we were doing, adapt or die, adapt or die. And everything that we did, because that was the leadership mentality that we had in that facility as the linebacker unit, that we had to adapt or we really were going to die on Sunday. The other team was going to beat us. So you have to have that same mentality. Yes, there's change. Not only change happening in the organizations, the how you guys are going to be interacting with customers on a daily basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. There's change happening in the industry. That's life. That's business. But one of the key takeaways that you can develop and implement into your daily life is feel that fear. Fear is a natural emotion. But what you cannot let that fear do is cripple your ability to move forward. Because I don't care if you've been with Allstate for 20, 30, 40 years, there is still more for you to achieve. There is still more for you to become as a man or woman, as a leader. And most importantly, there is a bigger difference for you to make every single damn day of your life. Because when you wake up in the morning and get the opportunity to live another day, it's not over with. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You cannot become a top salesperson with a lack of energy. You cannot create a legacy and build a phenomenal organization, have a great culture, go out into the marketplace and freaking dominate if you drop dead of a massive heart attack because you've been neglecting your health. I've seen it all too often. I've seen CEOs that are pulling in $25, $35 million a year. They neglect their health. They have a stroke, heart attack. Then they got to go to the hospital. They spend all their money trying to get their health back when a lot of times it's too late. But the best of the best, the best sellers, the best leaders know that their health, that their health taking control of that is one of the biggest success hacks that they have in their arsenal. So I highly encourage you to have a health goal on your list. People are initially excited when they set a goal. 
This is going to be our culture. This is going to be our strategy for Unisys as a corporation 5, 10, 15 years from now. We're excited, right? This is my sell selling goal. This is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to do in sales. This is the marriage I want to have. When you set that goal, you get excited. And then what happens three weeks after you set that goal? Life hits you in the mouth. Life gets in the way. The hustle and bustle of life makes you forget the enthusiasm that you had when you first set that goal. But when you know why you do what you do, when you know why you do what you do, you will never, ever, ever be the same again. And that goes for everything, personally and professionally. When you know why you do what you do, that is how you're going to become a top seller. That is how you're going to build a phenomenal, thriving, world-class culture. That's when you're going to become the best mother, the best father. Why do you do what you do? Think long and hard about that. And that is going to give you the tenacity to move forward despite fear, despite challenges, despite adversity. Why do you do what you do? Just as every organization has a mission statement, you as an individual has to be on a mission. I don't care how great an organization's mission statement is, if that organization does not have people working in that organization who are not on a mission themselves, that mission statement is useless. So find out why you do what you do. The future is bigger than the past. Your future is bigger than the past. When is your time? When is your time? Thank you so much.